Hey guys and welcome to another block spotlight. In this spotlight I will be taking a look at the thermal expansion sawmill block. Alright, so I've got one set up right here, but first let's have a look at the crafting recipe. Now the sawmill is crafted using a machine frame in the center. On top of that we have an iron axe. On the sides we have two planks, so this can be any uh, type of plank in the ore dictionary. In the bottom corners we have two copper ingots and in the bottom center slot we have a redstone reception coil. Now the machine frame is crafted using by default iron ingots in the corners, a gold ingot in the center and some glass uh, in the center outer slots there. So this in some instances in some mod packs can also require steel ingots in the corners but by default it's iron. Alright, now we also have the redstone reception coil here and this is simply crafted with one gold ingot and with two pieces of redstone at the ends of it. Okay, so let's have a look at the sawmill itself. So I've got one set up right here. It's currently being powered with this uh, creative energy cell. And the sawmill has a fairly extensive and complex user interface. So let's have a look. Over here on the left we have the amount of power that's currently being stored in the sawmill. So it needs this power to run essentially. And over here we have a slot to input some sort of battery. Which you can do but you know it's, it's easier to just connect it up to a conduit. Then over here we have the input slot. Here you will input items of many types. We'll get to that later. And then it will output it over here in one of these two slots and you get a bonus output sort of right here in this slot. Now the input in this slot here is sort of either extra or conditional. For example it can have a certain chance of outputting an item for a specific item into this slot but by default the main output will be uh, put in these two slots up here. All right. Now, first off, over here, we have the amount of power usage. The max amount of power that can be used and the amount of energy that's currently being stored. So this is a nice energy overview panel. Then we have redstone control, if you're not familiar with it. The first option will essentially make the machine run uh, under any circumstances. The second option, which is the default, will make it so that it will only run when there is no redstone signal being input into the machine and finally the high setting makes it only run when a redstone signal is being applied. And then finally we have the configuration. Now the configuration allows you to configure the sides of the machines where it will in and output certain items. Okay so we can see here this is a blue slot and it means over here this is the left side of the machine and this one is the back side of the machine. These will serve as input so everything you uh, input through here to for example an item duct or some sort of build craft uh, pipe it will insert it into this slot right here then we have these yellow uh, squares here at the top and bottom this uh, these will output any items that are normally put into this slot here and then finally we have the right side here which is red and that will output any items that are normally stored in these slots. So these will output automatically, you don't have to pump them out or anything. They will just always output through that side if something is connected there. So for example you can even put a chest there of course. Now you can left or right click these to uh, change the type of output. There's also as you can see an orange color. This means that it will output anything from these two slots into orange. So that's a combination of the red and the yellow, of course. There's also nothing, which means it doesn't serve as an in or output. And then again, we have the blue, the red, the yellow, the orange. So you can cycle through that. You go back with the right button, forward with the left button. All right, now let's have a look at how this machine works. So as the name may suggest, it's a sawmill, so it's supposed to, you know, saw up wooden items. That's sort of the general idea. And I've got some oak wood here. Let's input one. And it's working. And when it's done, we'll see it outputs six oak wood planks and one sawdust. Now, if you are, you know, 
thinking, hmm, this seems inter uh, interesting. Well, you're quite right, because normally if you just uh, throw uh, oak wood into your crafting grid, you'll get four planks. And now you get six planks and an additional sawdust here. So essentially the reason why you would want to use a sawmill is because it's more efficient than doing it the vanilla Minecraft way. Now there are many things you can input into the sawmill and I will not go into all of them, but you can uh, click the button here, well, the, uh, the arrow here in the center to see all the recipes. And there are quite a few of them. So you will see, you know, all the wood types you can uh, input there. It also tells you how much power is needed to process that. And uh, how, you know, the bonus item you get out of it is in this case sawdust all of the time. Uh, you get the six planks and this is for every you know wood type in your dictionary but there's also other things you can input besides wood for example over here we have a node block now if you're familiar the node block is crafted using redstone and some wood and well wood planks of course and this is essentially a way to get back the the resources you use for that now it does require some power so uh, you do not lose any of the resources in this particular case, but you do have the sort of, you know, the expense of inputting the power to actually revert it back to the, the resources you use for it. And there's also other items, for example, signs, uh, also rubber wood. It's a, a convenient way to get rubber, extra rubber out of rubber wood. Uh, you can also input tools and other things like jukeboxes. Uh, right here, uh, bookshelves, uh, all of that. So it's a very convenient block, especially if you want to uh, win back some resources when you're done with the block or something. Um, I went over all of these on the right here. So yeah, I think that's about it for this block. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. There's one small thing I still want to add, which I forgot. And that is that like any of the uh, of the thermal expansion blocks you can just uh, shift right click uh, with your right mouse button with a crescent hammer to remove it so you don't have to break it with a pickaxe or anything just get a crescent hammer hold shift and right click